This is Prince Hamley coming to you with 100,000 watts of pure love. The voice of Israel and for Israel. I want to talk to you today about Bibi, Babylon, and Bama. The headlines say, Enraged Palestinians thinking about returning to terror for Netanyahu speech. Palestinians say they want to return to terror, or well-timed terror, synchronized with diplomacy, after Netanyahu's straightforward talk for peace and a two-state solution for Israel. I have a question. When did they stop terrorism? The Palestinians' main tool of force to influence negotiations was terror under Arafat. What other kind of manifestation of disease would you expect from a sick, depraved worldview and religion? Killing innocent people and children, even their own? Tempting youngsters with the dream of heaven for murdering people? What a beautiful so-called God. Who in their right mind would want to serve a God like that? The hardliners in the Palestinian Authority want, number one, Israel's total withdrawal to pre-1967 borders, number two, a Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital, and three, the right of 1948 refugees to return to their home. As for number one, that is the withdrawal to pre-1967 borders by Israel, who started the war? Why discourage the brave IDF and IAF warriors who gave of their youth and strength for Israel and then give back what they won? Israel, you were attacked in 1967 and 1973. You won these wars. Then why give back land that you won, especially land Adonai promised you? As far as the 1948 conflict, let me remind you, who started that one too? As far as any part of Yerushalayim representing a Palestinian capital, there is no record of Palestinians having any ownership rights. And if they are talking about Islam, it wasn't even a religion until the 7th century CE or AD when a child molester named Muhammad, who married a nine-year-old girl, started the religion after a false god non-entity named Allah, the name of the so-called moon god used before that time. Eretz Israel, or the land of Israel, was named after one of the patriarchs of the Jewish people, Yaakov, whose name was changed by God to the name Israel. 4,000 years ago, the land was settled by the Israelites after their exodus from Egypt, or Misraim, about 3,500 years ago. Actually, there is no relationship between the names Palestinian and Philistine. The original Philistines were a non-Semitic people. As far as the Philistines, they only occupied the southern portion of the coastal region. The Arabs calling themselves Palestinians today are a Semitic people, and they are descendants of Ishmael. In fact, according to the British Mandate, or the Palestine Mandate, an Arab Palestine already exists on 80% of the land that was set aside for a Jewish homeland by the earlier Balfour Declaration. This is the fictional Arab Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, formerly Transjordan a nation that aggressively attacked Israel with the intention of its annihilation from the map on more than one occasion. In 1948, it conquered and occupied the disputed territories of Judea and Samaria. In 1967, Israel reconquered its land in a defensive war. And by the way, according to international law, land that is lost by an aggressor legally belongs to the aggrieved and attacked. The children of Israel and the land of Israel remain inseparable eternally. The Palestinians are so mad that someone, a.k.a. Benjamin Netanyahu, finally had guts and wisdom enough to plow through political correctness and speak the truth. I'm talking about Bibi's speech at Bar Ilan University. 
concerning President Obama's weak toast desire for a two-state solution in Israel. I would like to add one thing to your speech, Prime Minister Netanyahu. There is already a Palestinian state. Again, Jordan is the original Palestinian state. It is amazing that people as intelligent as Condoleezza Rice and Zipi Livni failed to capitalize on this. Could it be political expediency or political correctness? Netanyahu's speech at Bar Ilan University's Begin Sadat Hall on Sunday, June 14th, declared the following. The Palestinians' refugee problem must be settled outside Israel's boundaries, and Yerushalayim will remain the undivided capital of Israel with religious freedom for all faiths. Unquote. The Netanyahu speech expressed the formulated opinion of the majority of Israelis and which no Israeli leader previously has had the courage and wisdom to declare. Israelis should be proud of Bibi. God can bless a leader who does not apologize for his country when it's not necessary and who's not afraid to take a stand for truth or God. Netanyahu justified the Jewish people's ancestral right to the land of its fathers after 2,000 years of persecution. And he promised Israel would recognize a Palestinian national flag, government, and national anthem, but that in exchange, Israel was entitled to Palestinian recognition of Israel as a Jewish state with its own flag, anthem, and government. Even if the PA agrees to Netanyahu's offer, which they will not because they only want a one-way street, they will not keep their word. They never do. And this is a sign that what they believe intrinsically including their religion of Islam, is deceptive. You know a tree by its fruit. Yashir Arafat doubled and tripled his armed forces, blew up Israeli buses, and implemented bloody Palestinian suicide strikes against Israel while appearing to negotiate for peace. The White House said that President Obama welcomes Netanyahu's endorsement of a separate Palestinian state as an important step forward. Let me tell you what the real ploy is behind the land for peace negotiation. It is to reduce Israeli real estate to the position where Israel would not have effective air operations response. This obviously would render only one result for Israel, a forced nuclear operation against Iran and other terrorist rogue nations, including Russia. remind you that God's plan for the Middle East is to, number one, settle the Jews in Israel. Number two, give Jerusalem to Israel. Number three, destroy Babylon. You might want to listen to my podcast of Thursday, the 20th of March, 2008, and Thursday, 27th of March, 2008, titled Babylon, the Enemy of Israel Exposed, Part 1 and Part 2. You can find the links to those podcasts in the show notes of this podcast. And number four, to remind you of God's plan for the Middle East, is to judge Mount Seir and Edom. Number five, to make it evident to all nations that God has brought Israel back from the diaspora to Israel. Concerning that, the prophet Jeremiah tells us, Therefore, behold, the days come, says the Lord, that it shall no more be said, The Lord lives that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but the Lord lives that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands where he had driven them, and I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. You can read that in the Tanakh in the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 16, verses 14 and 15. And continuing on with God's plan for the Middle East, number six is to bring a spiritual awakening among Israeli people, and number seven, to make Yerushalayim a cup of trembling to all nations. Land for peace is not God's plan for the Middle East. Land for peace is a trap to weaken and position Israel into a limited area where she would have no effective air response, defensive or offensive operations. This is a planned stratagem for the annihilation of the state of Israel, and any Israeli or any other leader who defends such a plan 
should be marked as a traitor to the state of Israel. I'm talking about land for peace. Not only that, but the land belongs to Israel by, number one, promise from God to Avraham, and number two, victory in war, 1948, 1967, and 1973. I'm going to give you a prophecy, a personal prophecy by myself. I will prophesy to you that Obama will deceive Israel. He will make sweeping international moves in symphony with gestures and promises to Israel and to the Jewish people worldwide of support for Eretz Israel. In a moment of time, the now U.S. president will turn his back on Israel and the Jewish people, and geographically separated military clashes involving Israel will happen. At the right moment, not right for Israel, Obama will forge a peace treaty and come out in support of both the Jews and Arabic Islamic countries. And I'm going to give you some future news now. When the coming world leader, appointed by the New World Order, takes over, he will make a treaty, a covenant with Israel for seven years. Today, in addition to disease and famine issues, the leaders of the dominant nations are concerned with three primary factors. Number one, attaining peace among nations and ethnic groups. Number two, guaranteeing the flow of oil. And number three, stopping terrorism and conflict in the Middle East, especially between Israel and the Palestinians. Again, the chief bargaining factor will be the city of Yerushalayim. A seven-year treaty will be the coup de grace for Israel. What you should be watching for is leadership. A leader will seemingly have the solution for the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. This leader, appointed by the New World Order, will bring temporary peace, notice I said temporary, and will convince the Jewish people to sign a seven-year treaty. This is a stratagem designed for the annihilation of the people of Israel, the Jews. In exchange for agreeing to this treaty negotiation, Israel will be allowed to rebuild her temple on the Temple Mount. In exchange for agreeing to this treaty negotiation, Israel will be allowed to rebuild her temple on or near the Temple Mount. Then after three and a half years or 42 months, the New World Order leader, the false Mashiach, will do just what Antiochus Epiphanes did, who desecrated the Jewish temple at the time of the Maccabean revolt. You might want to read in the Tanakh, the prophet Daniel, chapter 9, verses 24 to 27, and Daniel, chapter 11, verse 31. The new world leader will go into the new rebuilt temple and blaspheme God. Then he will declare that he himself is God. The 42 months which follow this event, in other words, the last half of the seven-year covenant, will prove to be the worst time of persecution the Jews have ever known, worse than they have experienced during the Holocaust under Nazi Germany. The seven-year treaty covenant will be a trap to bring about the subjugation, persecution, and total annihilation of the Jewish people. During the last half of the seven years, many Jews will flee to the area of Petra, where they will be safe from the anti-Messiah, the coming world leader. God causes a supernatural geological happening to take place to protect them from an attempt of the New World Leader to extinguish the Jews who have fled to Petra. Now let me talk to you about the ultimate, the real and lasting peace. There will be no peace until the Mashiach returns. However, you can have peace in your heart. Make sure you know the real Messiah now. Avoid the grasp of the New World Leader, the false Mashiach who is alive now and hates the Jewish people, and he's waiting to come into that place of world leadership. He's on the scene today. Pray to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Avraham, Yitzhak, Ve'akov. Ask him to reveal to you if Yeshua is really your Mashiach. If he does, then receive him into your life. Pray and ask Yeshua what he wants you to do. Read the Tanakh and the Brit Hadashah. 
And by the way, right now there are 144,000 Jewish male prophets, 12,000 out of each of the 12 tribes of Israel, called and anointed by the Lord God to prepare the return of Yeshua HaMashiach to earth to establish his kingdom. Some of these Jewish male prophets already know they are called, some do not. God will begin to show them, and if you are one of them, he will begin to show you with signs that you cannot deny. This is the Voice of Israel, and this is Prince Handley coming to you with 100,000 watts of pure love. Baruch haba b'shem Adonai. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad.